Hello everybody and welcome to What Do You Say Anime. I am your host Peter and with me as always is my co-host Adam. Adam, how you doing today? I'm doing all right, all things considered. How about yourself? Uh, doing really well. Hey, just want to give everybody an update on what's happening with the delay in the episode production. If you were unaware that me and Adam take place, our podcast in Minnesota, and me especially, I live in South Minneapolis, where if you haven't heard, Mr. Floyd passed away by the Minneapolis police. So there has been commotion, protests, rioting all around my house, and I felt like I needed to be a part of that. And put the podcast on hold for a little bit. So, just want to give people an update. Uh, it's, I wouldn't say it's calming down, but now that the National Guard has been, like, here. And there's definitely some changes going on in the community. And I think that we'll get back on track. But I just want to give, like, people, real quick. I know this isn't, like, a political podcast. But I just want to give people my experience of what happened. Um, so... If you're unaware, Mr. Floyd passed away about a mile from my house. And then we started having riots and protesting around Precinct 3. And that was three days ago. And I was there, and that was a life-changing experience for me. Uh, seeing thousands of people come together over uh, the racial discrimination between the Minneapolis Police Department. And seeing all those buildings on fire was absolutely insane i don't know how else to describe it it was surreal i felt like i was living in a video game because you don't you see that stuff on like movies and you see that stuff in video games and you don't really see it in real life so that got a little crazy and then i personally live a block and a half away from precinct five and after precinct three was burnt well it's not burnt to the ground but it's completely destroyed uh, the focus was on Precinct 5, so that's a block and a half from my house. So I was a little preoccupied with things going on in my neighborhood. In terms of damages, somebody lit our garbage cans on fire, but that's about it. Nobody, Everybody was pretty respectful. Uh, I got to talking to a lot of people who went to the protest at Precinct 5. I, I didn't do any protesting at Precinct 5 just because it's way more crowded than precinct three was and just like COVID fears and stuff like that. Like I didn't want to be put at risk. So I was a part of like the cleanup process the, the day after. So I definitely was helping out my community the best way that I could, but just let people know there's some shit going on in our life right now. That's delaying the production of our episode. So I hope people are understanding of what, what's going on, but just let people know the streets are safe. I'm safe. Um, it's really, a humbling experience right now just seeing everybody come together and it's really like a life-changing moment in my life so that's my two cents ab do you have anything positive going on in your life well i've been uh, catching up on a lot of these shows that we're supposed to be watching i started reading tower of god that's been nice. pretty interesting but you know i work out down in minneapolis right next to the stadium and i know they've been worried about protests and one of our we have two buildings down there and right next to one of the buildings was the uh holiday that got lit on fire yeah. like literally next door like across the street so like it's been a pretty crazy time at work because of that because places won't come in to pick up shipments and stuff because they're worried so like it's been affecting a lot of things on my uh and my job at least but not in my personal life i've fortunately been able to avoid that yeah, if people are interested, I live I was live streaming off my porch the last night. So if you go to my Twitch stream, which is Don't Sweat with Three T's, and you're interested in looking at some videos from my point of view, I live on the backside of Precinct Five. So had the National Guard and cops rolling through all night last night. Uh, just an insane experience, but it's definitely something I'm gonna remember for the rest of my life. It's pretty crazy, but we're an anime podcast, so we gotta talk anime. So Ab, do you wanna? We had a pretty crazy week for anime, so let's just jump into some anime news that happened. All right, so we've actually had a lot of delays, and we haven't really done a new segment since the start of this season. So a lot of these delays are from stuff that was supposed to air now, stuff that's going to be airing next uh, next season coming up, and stuff that's even been pushed out even farther. So let's first jump into delays. First off, we have Pokemon Journeys will be resuming come June 7th. We have the third season of Don Machi has been delayed out until October or even later. They have not set a date for that one yet. Reincarnated as a Slime Season 2 has been delayed until January and July of 2021. And The Slime's Diaries, which is a spinoff series, 
in the same universe is delayed. Is sorry, delayed till April 2021. Food Wars: The Fifth Plate will be resuming on July 3rd. My teen romantic comedy Snafu is delayed until July. Quintessential Quintuplets is delayed out until January 2021. That sucks. Yeah. SAO Alicization War of the Underworld Part 2 is not this season anymore. It's been delayed till July. ReZero Season 2 has been delayed until July. Haikyuu to the top. Second half is delayed from July to an unannounced date. We'll get more on that later. Irregular at Magical High School's Season 2 delayed to October. The Promised Neverland Season 2 has been delayed till January 2021. The second half of No Guns Life has been delayed from April until further notice. Yeah, that one the, sucks too. I'm a big yeah. fan of No Guns Life. Yeah, that was one of the ones you were watching. The, you've watched the first half and really liked, so that uh, sucks. Yeah, that's... last year. Yep. Fate's Day Night Heaven's Feel Part 3 has been delayed until further notice. That's, that's a big one. That's a big one. A yeah. lot of people were anticipating the final chapter of Heaven's, Heaven's Feel, and I know a lot of the Fate fans are really upset. I, I shouldn't say they're upset, but they're they're everybody is loving Heaven's Feel right now, and just they have to wait even longer for the conclusion. Yep. We have Princess Principal's sequel anime film has been delayed out of April until further notice. Did it say which one? Because it has like six movies. I It didn't say which one. I think they're pretty much pushing back the production of them. So until for, until they give us more of an update, I didn't see the, the article if it gave specifically which one. And speaking I think of it's... Princess Principal, that's our, that's our book club episode this Tuesday. Yep. So if you want to follow... Party follow along with our watch party the princess principal this tuesday join our discord yeah absolutely you guys will enjoy it digimon adventures has been delayed until further notice that one got three episodes in and got pushed till we don't know i guess at yep, this point definitely yep the new higurashi when they cry project has been delayed until further notice the seven deadly sins has been delayed until further notice and scientific a certain scientific railgun has been delayed until July 16th, and then that series will continue airing as usual. So we've had quite a lot of delays, and that is only, I think, about a quarter of the ones that I found I could have spent all day talking about yeah. shows. But I will see if we can get an entire list of them posted in a link on in the video somewhere for you guys to check out if you're interested in what else has been delayed. And speaking of a, like a delay, but also a news at the same time, we finally got notice of the new studio that is taking over season four of Attack on Titan. Yes. But it's also pushed back to 2021. It was originally <laughs> scheduled for October. So we found out that MAPPA will be taking over from Wit Studios and they released a promo video, which looked really good. So I think a lot of people are... I think Wit Studios did a fantastic job with Attack on Titan. It, I think it's what put them on the map. And I'm waiting to see the backstory to see why uh, Vinland Saga, or it's not Vinland Saga, they did Vinland Saga, but um, why Witch Studios is not taking on this project. It sounds like there's some like behind the scenes thing between AOT and Wit that they couldn't come to an agreement on something. And uh, I think a lot of people were uh, thinking that maybe A1 was going to take over because Wit Studios and A1 have like a, uh, like a, collaboration like they're kind of like under the same umbrella and it sounds it turns out that mappa is taking over and mappa has been killing it the last two years so mappa did uh doro hidro uh they did zombie land saga i mean they've done they've done a lot so be really interesting to see how that they're going to handle aot season four and they also announced that they're doing a recap movie uh, from so it'll be one movie that recaps season one to season three, in order for people to get ready for season four. For somebody like me, who hates season one, and I didn't even bother with season two because I think Attack on Titan is one of the most overrated anime of all time. And if it takes fifty episodes for a show to get good, the show isn't good. But then I say that as a Black Clover fan, so it's really, <laughs> I like I like contradict myself all the time. So I just could not get into AOT at all. But that's a different story for another day. Yeah, I feel like that's something I might want to check out because I'm in exactly the same boat as you on that. Yeah, I, I mean, 
I could probably get suckered into watching the movie, but there's no way I'm watching season two and there's no way I'm going to like be able to catch up in time, nor do I care to catch up in time, but that's just my two cents. But also yeah. in other news, it's not all just bad. We got some yeah, good news too. And it yeah, came I out. Oh, some... uh, go ahead. What are you saying? Oh no, no, go, go. You're good. No, we, it came out that we we're getting some brand new adaptations from some big name mangas that I think a lot of people are excited for. So we got two Shonen Jump adaptations announced. That's Act Age, which is the drama filled story about like a young Japanese actress and just like her trials and tribulations. It's a huge. It's like the third biggest or third most popular. Uh, serialization in Shonen Jump and which is pretty surprising considering it is Shonen Jump and it's a drama series not like where you have like somewhere like The Promised Neverland where it's drama but it also has all these other elements into it. Act Age is just a drama and it's really surprising to see how popular Act Age is but it's not surprising that it's going to be getting an adaptation. I think it's going to be a perfect adaptation. Shows like that are perfect for anime and then along with act age we are getting chainsaw man which not my cup of tea which is really like gory it's kind of like the doro hidero where we get the gore the horror but it's also like comedy i think the main character just wants to like have sex with girls and kill people so i think it definitely it touches some demographic that's not me but i know a lot of people say it's a lot more it's wittier than what you think it is based off the premise of some dude who just turns into a chainsaw demon. And I think there's other, like, people in the world that have something similar. I think there's, like, a gunman. So instead of chainsaws, he's just a, he just guns. So there's a whole bunch of, like, mischief going on. Somebody, if you want in the comments, that can explain Chainsaw Man better than I can. I'm just basing it off of what I read off Mal. But I know a lot of people enjoy Chainsaw Man, so it's not surprising that it's also getting an adaptation. I just think... It's one of those things where it hasn't been serialization for super long. Same thing with Act Age. That maybe I think people were ex expecting the adaptations to become coming down the road and not as soon as... It, it's probably going to be as early as early like see, or, um, winter 2021. So we should be seeing those pretty soon. Along with those two, we also are getting Tokyo Revengers. Which I think a lot of people maybe don't know what Tokyo Revengers is, but it won the Shonen category in this Tokyo Manga Awards thing. So for best Shonen Manga, Tokyo Revengers won. So this is going to be really big for that Shonen category. It's about uh, gangs and going back in time and trying to stop something from happening. Like, I think like this, the main character's girlfriend's murdered by a gang. So it's about a dude going back and trying to prevent the death and then a bunch of shit happens. So... It's shown in. It's gonna be a lot of fighting. It's gonna be. A, I think like Nazis are involved too because the swastika symbols on there. But I could be mistaken. It's it's probably gonna be like a whole whole mess. But I know people love Tokyo Revengers. And let's see what else. It's also announced that Spy Family, which is right up my alley, is getting an anime adaptation down the road. It's not announced when. I think it's gonna be probably late 2021. But Spy Family is a family of spot. One's an assassin. Uh, one is... I think they're like both kind of assassins. The mom and dad. And then the, the kid that they have is a psychic. So it's just like a comedy hodgepodge of like Mr. and Mrs. Smith. For like the Brad Pitt, Angelina Jolie movie. It's just, it's just family fun adventure kicking ass as a family type of show. It's right up my alley because I think it has like slice of life elements. And I'm really looking forward to that. And it was also announced that the critically acclaimed uh, March Comes in Like a Lion will be getting a third season, which it's probably going to be like anime of the year contender as soon as it's released. I think season two on Mal is like the ninth highest rated anime of all time. Like, it's not, so my, it's not my show at all. It's like the one show that I... The, the most critically acclaimed anime, most of 90%, of 99% I can get into, except for, like, the two, we talked about both of them, Attack on Titan and March Comes Down Like it, like a Lion. Two shows I could not get into at all. So, but I know I'm in the vast minority on that one. And yep. <laughs> that's going to be a huge release when it comes out. I 
unknown when it's coming out. I'm also going to guess that's a 2021 because they spend so much time on the animation. The first two seasons were like 25 episodes. So I'm guessing they're going to take their time and with this season and we'll probably be seeing it in 2021. All right. Yeah, I'm looking forward to that one for sure. The others I don't know a lot about, but if they're as good as they sound, then I'll probably be checking at least a couple of them out. Yeah, dude. I can Spy Family, that's my jam. I love the premise of Spy Family. I cannot wait for that. And I, all think, right. that, I think that's all the news. Do you have anything else? Oh, I, I, got, I got more. Oh, I got shit. More okay, you. keep going. All right. So, weathering with you for fans of that series uh, from the Koto Shinkai, we'll be happy to hear that the physical release is going to be coming September 15th of this year. That includes the Blu-ray, the DVD, and the Steelbook editions. And six weeks prior to that launch on April 4th, the on-demand platforms will be getting uh, Weathering With You. So if you're oh, someone wow. who likes to stream it, you should look fo- look forward to seeing what platform that lands on. I'm looking forward to uh, that. Whisker I fi- Away. I finally got my girlfriend to finish your name for the first time. and It took, oh, only, t- only took a year so now. She has me Weathering With You, but I would love to force her to rewatch it with me again. Oh, yeah. Now that she knows, like, she can kind of see some of the references from your name and stuff dropping in there. And yeah, just that's that's the hope. Be able to compare the two. Yeah, that's the hope. All right, another anime movie, A Whisker Away, which was set to originally air on June fifth in Japan, was delayed due to the uh, global world pandemic we're going through, and uh, it's now going to debut worldwide on Netflix on June eighteenth. So this is from Studio, what is it, Coloriodo or Color. I can never say this because it looks like Colorado. Colorado. Studio Colorado. It's, yeah, it's, it's their <laughs> second full-length film. Their first one was Penguin Highway, but they're also the studio oh. behind behind Pokemon Twilight Wings. So they have a lot. They have a fair bit of experience, and uh, it looks really good. I don't know if you've seen the uh, information on this at all. I haven't, but uh, I know a lot of people love Penguin Highway. So yeah. That, so that's the good idea. News. Behind- yeah, the idea behind a whisker away, it's like a slice of life with like some fantastic elements. It's a girl who has a crush on this boy in high school, but he doesn't pay any attention to her. And she ends up finding a mask that when she puts it on, it turns her into a, into a cat. And that's like the one way she's able to get his attention. And she enters like this world of like talking with cats and stuff like that. And she's living like a double life. Okay. So. Okay. Uh, in other news, the Kyoto anime fire in that happened back in was it july of last year was it yeah july of 20 july 18th they arrested the arsonist that is suspected of burning down the kyoto animation studio that resulted in the death of 36 individuals and the injury of 33 and his stated reason for starting the fire was he thought kyoto animation stole his novel and that he'd be able to kill many people if he used gasoline. So I'm glad that guy's off the streets, this person. We don't need people like this and out I th- there. I think the reason chaos. why he was being arrested now is I think he was in the hospital this entire time because he also su- like suffered like severe damage. Yes, burns and, to his hands, and, and he's the, been now yeah. officially arrested and yeah, so he wasn't just like try. walking around in the streets this whole time, like being a free man. Like he was and like custody no. using like custody in like a hospital and now he's just like healthy enough to be arrested arrested correct all right and we have just a couple more things in some uh, anime adjacent news some video game news re zero according to spike chunsoft announced that it's working on a ps4 switch and steam game based around the royal selection storyline of the first season of the re zero anime The game will contain alternate routes or what-if situations that the original author is supervising the story of. So if you're a fan of ReZero and you like, uh, I I believe it's like a visual novel story that's going on here. So there's that. Don Machi Infinite Combat is a dungeon crawler crawler RPG with visual novel storytelling. It's been delayed to late summer for its Western release. And with that delay, they're going to be adding a um, collector's edition here in North America, which will include the base game, soundtrack, art book, a reversible Hestia pillowcase, six art cards, and a box set for the collection. So if you're someone like me who collects a lot of JRPGs, 
this might and you love anime this might be something to add to that's the list right up your alley up. yep and the final news story death and request 2 idea factory international released information on the western release of the second game in the death and request series from compile hearts if you're not aware compile hearts is known for the hyper dimension neptunia series along with the data live games and record of agris lore and this will be releasing in the west on ps4 and steam this summer All with right. english japanese and chinese uh subtitles damn that was, so, a, lo- that was a lot of news <laughs> that was a lot of news a lot of things happened oh episodes. i missed one more i still have one more anime expo they we, like we told you one of our episodes recently that they canceled our convention out there for July. They are now doing an Anime Expo Light convention, which sounds like it's going to be an online convention, but there's not a lot of details. But it's going to be held the same weekend that they were planning to do the original Anime Expo. That's July 3rd and 4th. And with this announcement on their Twitter page, they had logos for Bushy Road, Crunchyroll, Pony Canyon, and Viz Media. So we should hear announcements from those four groups at least and more to come and then funimation that same exact weekend of the third and fourth is planning on doing their own funimation con 2020 which will be an online streaming convention with industry information so if you like online conventions which it seems like we're moving to because of this whole crisis there's a couple going on during the fourth of july weekend Yes, keep an eye out because when Anime Expo drops, that's when all the big stuff for the year gets announced. So stay tuned around the July 4th weekend because anime news is going to be dropping like hotcakes. All right, so after our news segment, we're going to be moving into a segment that I'm calling the $10 million scenario. So I got this idea from listening to the news. So it happened twice in the same week where people found large amounts of cash like millions of dollars in like garbage bags on like the side of the road or whatever and both stories they turned it into the police i was like wow if you had all this money like wouldn't you want to do something with it and so i was like well what if we found a shit ton of money and made our own anime so this is our 10 million dollar scenario where we both me and ab both have found 10 million dollars and we're going to create our own anime so, Adam, do you want to go first, or do you want me to go first? Oh, uh, I'll go first, I guess. Okay. I feel like yours is a little bit better than mine, so... All right, Adam, but, take it away with your $10 million scenario. All right, so my story focuses on a first-year high school student named Ryuichi. He is the middle child of a father who is a professional wrestler. Professional masked wrestler known as the Eternal Dragon. Ooh. Ryuichi is an otaku who has devoted his life to getting into a good college so that he can support his sisters. He has an older sister named Hatsu and a younger sister named Asumi. Hatsu is 21 and Asumi is 15 at the time. Whom he lives with. Ryuichi's father and mother both passed away after his father got behind the wheel of a car of after course. a night of celebrating <laughs> after he won the heavyweight wrestling title. Love it. Ryuichi was only 10 at the time, and because of their death, Ryuichi used to love sports like his father, but after it, he devoted his life to his education like his mother always wanted him to do, and he's always held a grudge against his father ever since for what happened. This causes him to start secluding himself in his room with video games and anime to drown out his sorrow. His older sister Hatsu watches over him and his younger sister Asumi, who's growing up... Well, sorry, while growing up, they used... She used to practice wrestling moves on Ryuichi so that she could toughen him up toughen him up because he was too small and she wanted him to be able to fight and be strong like her father was. After their parents passed away, she was forced to suspend her college education to get a job so that her and her siblings had a place to stay. She ended up taking up her father's drinking habits, which <laughs> causes Ryuichi to kind of have issues with her. And she's she's kind of a slob as well. So... The younger sister, Asumi, is the kind and caring one of the group. She loves her big brother and used to follow him around, follow him around everywhere whenever he was do- playing sports and being outside. When it came to school, she was always the brightest, and she learned how to cook and clean and study from her mother. After her parents passed away and her brother went into seclusion, she took up her the caretaking aspect of the family and does the cleaning and cooking and helps her older brother study when he needs help. So, the story begins on our first day of high school for Ryuichi. 
he is walking to school with his younger sister who goes to the middle school a few blocks up the road. After Asumi meets up with some friends outside the high school gate, she tells Ryuichi that she'll meet him there at the corner when the school lets out. Ryuichi walks into school and proceeds to go about his new daily routine. When he was in middle school, he didn't really have friends, so his free time was spent doing homework and playing games whenever there wasn't anything else to do. After school, when he meets his, when he goes to meet his sister outside at the corner, he sees three older guys making trouble for her and one of her friends. He goes over to try to deal with the situation, but things start to turn violent. One of the guys grabs his sister, Asumi, and the other two attempt to attack Ryuchi. One of the guys grabs him, and in an instinctive moment, he reverses the hold, throwing the guy down on his head, while the second guy sucker punches Ryuichi in the face. This knocks him out cold, and after he wakes up, he finds his sister, Asumi, and her friends seem to be just fine. When he questions what happens, Asumi explains that her friend, Miyu, saved them from the thugs. Ryuichi... Oh, sorry, I lost where I was at. <laughs> <laughs> the thugs. Uh, she explains, yeah, from the thugs... She says when he, ah, God dang, where did it go? Rini, when, okay, so when he asked Asumi what happened, she explains that when Miu dealt with the thugs, God, where, I freaking lost myself. <laughs> All right, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go back a minute because I think I have two of these things quoted twice. That's why I got mixed up. Ah, uh, okay. So he asked me what happened and how she dealt with them, and she explains to him that she's on the wrestling team, and then when he asks her if there's anything he can do to thank her, she says she wants to see that move again. Confused, Ryuichi asks her what she means, and she says the move that he did was called a hip toss. It's frequently used in both pro professional and amateur wrestling alike. When, he, when she asked how she knows this, she informs him that she is actually a member of the, the wrestling club at, the 40, at 48 kilograms, which is 105 pounds. And she wants him to try out for the team so that she can see him in action again. He doesn't really like the idea, being that his father, thinking about his father again, but pressure from Asami and a growing of infatuation with Miyu starts to change his mind over time. Sometime later, Ryuichi is introduced to Akihiko from Miyu, who is the captain of the wrestling team. He's, a he's 163 pounds or 74 kilograms and is the captain of the team, who's aiming to bring the team to nationals that year and win an individual national wrestling title. He explains to Ryuichi how wrestling works since Ryuichi is only really familiar with the professional wrestling environment. Ryuichi is going to be filling the spot at the 53 kilogram point, which is 173 pounds, which has been vacated by the transfer of Sai, a second year prodigy who won the national title the year before. So the question is, will Ryuichi be able to figure out the new sport of wrestling and will he be able to fill the shoes of a next national champion? So sorry about the little mix up there. I was trying to, I had a, two paragraphs written twice here. So I mixed myself up pretty times. bad, but uh, yeah. So a little of this is actually based on my own personal experience with wrestling. I still have my parents and everything, but <laughs> I actually got dragged into wrestling from a coach who kind of wanted, who saw me get, I got into a fight with a bully and ended up uh, getting recruited for the wrestling team because of it. And so I kind of took a little bit of my own personal experience here. Dude, your life is an like, anime. Tied it into wrestling because it's something I don't see a lot of in anime, actual like amateur wrestling or high school wrestling. Everything kind of revolves around like professional wrestling, which I, for me, hasn't been as I don't find as fun. So I tried to took some anime tropes that I've seen it or that have been in a million other sports anime, and then tried to tie them in with my own personal experience to make a somewhat like decent opening to a story i'm terrible writer and this took me days i'm not even <laughs> getting you to write this because i just could not think of a decent like scenario for how to set things up but that's what i got with my money if i were to do it i would like it done by studio gonzo they did uh uh hinamaru sumo which i really liked a sumo wrestling that anime and i loved the visuals of it and gonzo does good work so i think i'd like to see them be the ones to animate it and is your main character's name based off of Ryuji from Toradora? No, I I, I knew that was going to come up. I chose the name <laughs> Ryuichi because it means son of Ryu. And R I knew Ryu meant dragon. So like his father, oh, I named the eternal dragon. What? So his name would be Ryuichi. Yo, that's smart as fuck. And then, and then Asumi, I think is if it was... I think the name was something like calm and like caring or something along those lines. 
and Hatsu just means the beginning. So she was like the first daughter. So the, her name was Hatsu. Wow. Okay. Um, that's some that, to... that's some in depth shit. Like I did I did not do that at all. That's I love like that that like the the, the naming Son of Dragon. That's so cool. Yeah, and then I think Miu means like beautiful flower or like free flowing flower. So like my whole idea was that she because she's such she's a lightweight wrestler that she would be like a quick and like like quick and lethal with her moves. So she would be like flowing like a flop like a or sorry not flower feather, a feather like flying through the air. Sure. So that's how I came up with the name Miu. And then there was one more Akihiko is like golden boy. So. I was thinking like he's a na- he's gonna he's trying to be a national treasure. He's got that like high inspiration or something like that. So that okay. was why I picked that name. I didn't cool. think of any last names for everyone because I couldn't. That was too much work for me. <laughs> question, question: Since I don't know a whole lot about wrestling, is there like co-ed wrestling, like um, in the United see, States? That, I don't I don't know about it in Japan. Like that's kind of the biggest thing. I know that it is in the United States if their team doesn't have enough for uh, enough to make a female wrestling team that the females wrestle on the ma- the men's wrestling team. So like that's one of the things I don't know. Okay. I can't really speak for how it works in Japan and trying to find that information just was not coming up. So I just kind of I just tried to wing it and I was like if I just have to make them have a women's wrestling team, I'll do it. Sure. But Japanese female wrestling is actually really high level. Like I think in the Rio games they won like four they had like four of their t- the uh women Japanese women won like gold. Okay. Or something like that. Like they have a really, really strong female wrestling uh culture over there in Japan. So there's that. Oh, right. But on. yeah, I don't know per se if they're if they allow them to wrestle with men. That's kind of something I wasn't able to find. Okay, would this be like a shoujo style then? Or what would you like what style of like story would do you think it's gonna go along the lines of since you kind of have like that mixed co-ed base going on in the story so my and my thought was this is, is that it would for the most part be a sports a pretty much run-of-the-mill sports anime i want to throw a little bit of a love interest in there and Got a little a... bit of like girl power type thing because i my, my whole thing is i don't know how many people have seen like kenichi so they have the whole relationship between the, the two main characters, uh, Kenichi and Miyu, who are kind of, and that's actually where the name originally came from, was for the love interest character, Miyu, the lightweight wrestler, Okay, was from that where she's like an awesome prodigy of martial arts. And she's kind of like takes him under her wing because they're about the same size. So it would be her like showing him the ropes, so to speak. So that was kind of the idea there. But I definitely kind of wanted to mix a little bit of a romance in there. I threw a couple. Uh, I had the idea that this younger. I even created the younger sister character strictly for if they got to the point after season one where she could come up and be the manager of the team. Like, okay, I wanted to have some connection to like who would like become the manager in the future because there's normally well, every time a second year comes, they have to have the new manager show up. So. Right on. No, I think that's I think that's a really good story. Like I I would definitely I'm a big fan of like unique storylines and we don't other than professional wrestling, we don't have amateur wrestling uh animes that I know of. There's maybe a manga, but like I don't know any any amateur nothing wrestling. Recent. There's nothing recent. There's something from like the seventies, but shit, I take professional wrestling too because all the professional wrestling anime are really bad. We got Tiger Mask and we had Kimono Michi and like that's it. Yeah. All right. And I like I don't I didn't really get around to writing the part in the future, but the character Sai, which was the guy that Ryuichi would be replacing, I eventually wanted to make some kind of rival character because yeah, he'd be filling sense. his weight class position. He would kind of be like on some rival team that he meets up against and would be someone to like kind of like put him in his place and like be that like goal post that he's trying to obtain. Right on. Okay, do you have any other final remarks before we go into mine? No, just I uh, want to apologize again for that middle section because that uh, was, all good. I completely lost myself there. All right, now it's time for mine. <clears throat> Here we go. The story begins in 2020 present day. Daisuke Sedin is a five-year-old boy living in Vancouver, Canada with his mother and father. 
Daisuke's father is a former has-been Canadian hockey player. Through consistent injuries and poor play, is now a free agent with no suitable landing spots in sight. Daisuke's father, just like Adam's story, begins to drink more, and more, to deal with the constant disappointment in his life. After one night of heavy drinking, Daisuke wakes up to see his mother and father in a heated argument, but tonight, he takes it too far. Daisuke witnesses his father hitting his mother. Daisuke jumps in and breaks up the fight. Daisuke's father storms out of the house, and while he is away, Daisuke's mother, Haru, tells Daisuke to pack up his things because they are leaving forever. Now, Haru is, is full-fledged Japanese, and the two are leaving everything behind to board a one-way trip to Sapporo, Japan. Fast forward 10 years later to 2030. The rise of hockey's popularity in Japan has skyrocketed, and only baseball is more popular. Daisuke is entering his first year of high school. While mostly a standout in the looks category, being half Japanese and half Swedish, Daisuke is mostly a quiet kid, but, does, but stands for one thing, and he does not take shit from bullying or abuse. While in the courtyard, Daisuke notices a large group of bullies, picking on a larger, or a larger uh, classmate. While the larger, <laughs> while the larger student doesn't seem to mind or care, Daisuke's red flags immediately go off and confronts the bullies. After a brief exchange of words and fists are thrown, after the dust settles, only the only people standing are Daisuke and the bullied classmate eating a sweet roll. If you let people talk to you like that, they'll never stop coming at you, exclaims Daisuke. The larger student then finishes his sweet roll and comes to uh, and comes to his senses in a moment. What happened here? Apparently, when the boy eats, he loses all perception of what's happening around him. This is our first interaction between Daisuke and Sho. Immediately after becoming best friends, because that's how anime works, we find out that Sho is a former sumo prodigy, but gave it up because he doesn't like moving. Fast forward that day, Daisuke accidentally runs into the beautiful Yamato, rounding a corner. Daisuke is instantly badly in love with her because, you know, that's how anime works. He asks for his, her forgiveness and he will do anything to keep talking to her. Well, what do you know? Yamato is carrying a large stack of flyers for the school hockey club. She is quickly, she, she is quirky and manipulative and tells him, if he wants to see her again, come to practice after school. Daisuke, <laughs> Daisuke drags his friend Sho along because... Uh, he is nervous and pays Sho in sweet buns. Sho loves sweet buns. That's where they meet the cast of the Hokkaido Eagles hockey team. And thus begins the story of our hotshot bruiser protagonist and his lovable goaltender best friend as they reach for nationals and drop the puck airing this fall. <laughs> uh, so with this, I would have production IG do the, do the animations. They are the one who did... Uh, Kuroko no Basket, and I would want this to be a very, very shonen style show. I want it to be super fast paced because hockey is super fast. I would love Show to be the fat, lovable goaltender where he hates moving, so he just stands in the net. That's his thing, <laughs> and he it, it's just like he becomes like the best goaltender because he's so fat and just blocks everything by standing still. And then Daisuke is this. Like, bruiser, but, like, at the same time, he's, like, a prodigy hockey player because his dad was a professional hockey player. So he's kind of got, like, that that in-his-blood type of thing. And I think it would just be a really fun, like, comedy shonen. Even though I'm not the biggest shonen guy, I just think it would be really fun for... I, in sports, if you make a super shonen, it would be super fun. And I chose the name Daisuke because it's my favorite Japanese name for some reason. Uh, there was a baseball player named Daisuke Matsuzaka. And I was a big fan of him, so I just gravitate towards the names Daisuke and um, Kazuma from Konosuba. Love the name uh, Kazuma. I got Yamato from My Love Story. I just love when the fat guy's like, Yamato! Daisuke! In the show. So I love the name Yamato. And then Sho is a last name of a professional like sumo wrestler that I googled. So that's the, the, the lovable cast of like... Some idiots, but I think it'd just be like a really fun sports comedy. I'd kind of reflect it kind of like Haiku, where I would like it to be character driven in the sense of like there's a large cast because hockey isn't just like five people. Like you have three or four lines, so you have 15 to 20 players, which would be really hard to do in anime to have 15 to 20 characters. But like Haiku does a pretty good job at that. 
where they have like 11 on the team maybe. And I think this would be really unique because there's not, I know there's like some hockey manga, but there's no hockey anime. And being from Minnesota, I'm a hockey fan. I grew up with it my entire life. So I, that's just my $10 million scenario. Drop the puck airing this fall. Yeah, I didn't even think of the name for my series. Like you already, you went above and beyond on that. You had last names. You had, uh, you had a slogan for your title. That was good. I like that. Well, it's like sports animes are just like haiku. Literally, just means volleyball in Japanese. And Kuroko no basket is just Kuroko's basketball or something like that. Like the sports anime titles are like really easy and really simple there's no like meaning to it it's just like run with the wind volleyball <laughs> so this one's just like drop the puck like just trying to think of like some hockey term that everybody could get around and then pretty much distinguish that it's hockey with the word the with the wording puck all right yeah. so do you have anything else left to say i know this is kind of a shorter episode but i got riots outside of my house I don't know if you can hear, but there's helicopters going around. So I personally am going to go outside and see what's going on in my neighborhood. Adam, do you have any final words before we head out for today? No, I think I'm good. Just stay safe out there, everybody. You know, tell your family you'll love them. Absolutely. And yeah, stay, don't don't take shit. Um, be safe. Uh, oh, we have a Discord. Join our Discord. I'll link it in the comments below. Every other Tuesday now, we are doing Anime Watch Club where we are watching a show uh, and then we are doing it in like a group format. The first week we did Made in Abyss and this week we are doing Princess Principle. You can join our conversations along in our Discord if you want to watch along with us. It's kind of like a book club, but for anime. So anybody's welcome. Uh, you just need Discord if you want to talk. Otherwise, you can just watch our discussion every other Tuesday. So without further ado, or without further ado, <laughs> with, with saying that, uh, have a great night and we'll see you uh, next time.